Agnes has the highest willpower of the core investigators. Her agility is dead centre. Her combat is quite poor, and her intellect is definitely at the bottom of the tree. Agnes's ability says, reaction trigger, after one or more horror is placed on Agnes Baker, deal one damage to an enemy at your location. Limit once per phase. What does this mean? When you place a horror token on Agnes, if there are any enemies at her location, either engage with her or not, you may place one damage token on one enemy at her location. And you can do this once per phase. So when an enemy attacks her in the enemy phase, you get to do this once. When you take damage in the investigator phase from cards like Shriveling, you get to do this once. In the Mythos phase, when you fail certain tests. How do I take horror in the upkeep phase? Ah, forbidden knowledge. There are 33 enemies in the core set and Agnes can kill all of them in a single round except for three, without dipping a hand into the chaos bag. She can even kill the mystery monster. Roland Banks, you're fired. The fact that she's dead in two rounds is immaterial. Remember, the text says after one or more horror is placed on Agnes Baker. It doesn't say after she takes damage. It doesn't say after you place it on her assets or allies. You have to put the token on her to deal damage to an enemy. And therein lies the check to this powerful combo. Horror doesn't get much more direct than that. Moving on! Agnes's Elder Sign effect is plus one to this test for each horror on Agnes Baker. And if she isn't petrified, you aren't pushing her hard enough. Agnes's bonus card is the Heirloom of Hyperborea. You can only have one copy of this card in your deck. Like all investigator-specific cards, it has some serious icons on it. The text says, after you play a spell, draw one card. This is amazing! And you should immediately rush out and construct a deck consisting entirely of spell cards. Unfortunately, the core box only contains five level zero spells. One of which is... Agnes' weakness is unique because it has no revelation ability. You have a choice. You can either pay and play it like a normal event, the effect of which is to place one doom on the current agenda. This effect may cause the current agenda to advance. Or you can hold it in your hand like a hot potato and take two horror at the end of your turn. Good for monster killing. You can wait until the agenda has just advanced and then you have plenty of room to fill it up or play it when the agenda is going to advance anyway, depending on how bad the effects are on the reverse. She loves to take horror. She can't use the two traditional damage healing cards of first aid and medical texts. But she can use the leather coat which is free, and holy rosary which will boost her willpower and give her a tiny sanity buffer. Likewise with the arcane initiate. She has the lowest intellect of any investigator in the core set, so investigation will be a challenge for her. She needs cards like Arcane Studies, Lucky, Look What I Found, or better still, Drawn to the Flame, which is least deadly when played solo. Scrying can also be extremely effective when played solo. She isn't too much of a team player. She does nothing innately other than take horror and needs her spells in play or in hand to get going. But she certainly benefits from having teammates, particularly those with first aid or good investigation skills. Her scrying can help assign encounter cards to the most suitable player and even delay the appearance of a cover-up or hospital debts. With only one core box, she struggles. She needs spells and cards to manage horror. Consider proxying those cards or playing with a friend who has a second core box. The experienced blinding light dealing 2 damage will kill 10 out of the 33 enemies in the core box and if they don't die first time they become evaded, providing you succeed. Testing 5 willpower! Mind wipe is up to you. There are 21 out of 33 enemies in the core set that have nasty things in their text boxes. Its drawback is that it doesn't affect elite enemies, which is where it would be most useful. Also remember that victory is in an enemy's text box and there may also be parlay actions too. Book of Shadows is an extra ammunition for spells and it's vital if you only have the one core set to keep shriveling and popped up. As only scrying and shriveling use arcane slots, this won't really come into its own until we get more cards. The grotesque statue can only be used by Agnes and it's insanely powerful. You can't recharge it because it isn't a spell but you can bring it back from your discard pile with scavenging. If only Agnes wasn't so poor investigating. 
This is the only card in the game that will completely avoid any chance of an auto-fail. Not even Wendy can guarantee that. Close Call is taking up a card slot that Blinding Light could be filling. Think carefully, as Agnes only has an agility of three. The experienced Lucky costs two extra experience, and while card draw is vital, particularly with so few spells, you're probably better off spending the XP on the spells themselves. Finally, we have an overlooked gem in Aquina. This is possibly the ideal mechanic for Agnes. It allows her to take horror from enemies in order to use her ability and deal it back to them as damage, but it stops her taking damage which she can ill afford. It's entirely dependent on having more than one enemy at the location, however, which is bad news for everyone. But four sanity is a real boon. Bulletproof vest? Yes times two. Elder sign amulet? Also yes times two. If you just have the one core box, you will only get to play with Roland or Skids, both of which have access to first aid. As Roland is the more natural investigator, you lean towards him. Because Agnes and Skids are both loners, playing with these two might be an interesting experience. This is no ordinary waitress. This is in fact a lethal killing machine and not from the casual player.